No, this isn't a boom box. This is the little Rosie from Midnight. And this inverter weighs 15 pounds. In our last video, we showed this inverter outputting 98 amps AC. That was pretty incredible. A lot of our viewers, however, were commenting that a low frequency inverter would outperform the little Rosie. This is the RE version, so it's rated for 4,500 watts. At 71 pounds, we have this Victron Multi Plus 2. This is a 5 kVA inverter, which is more or less the same output power. The key difference is here in the top of the inverter, we have a transformer that does our step up from 48 volts to 120 volts. Today, we're going to compare this to the Little Rosie and see if that transformer truly equates to surge capacity. For the Multi Plus, we're going to set this up exactly the same way we have the Little Rosie set up. So we're going to have our two wires here coming out of the inverter. We're going to put a base load on the inverter with our Variac and heater. And then I have my power outlet here that we're going to plug the bounce house blowers behind me into. And that's going to give us our surge load to see what this inverter is capable of. We'll be monitoring the current with our shunt on the meter the whole time. So in our last video, we were testing the Little Rosie, and it impressed us. So you guys got to watch that first to see what it was capable of. Now it's time to do the same tests with the Victron. Now, Victron's a little bit weird on their specs. They rate their inverters in KVA, which essentially, it's a 4 kilowatt inverter. So if we run a resistive load that has a power factor of 1, you can put 4 kVA on it. They're anticipating most loads don't have a perfect power factor. I'm going to skip the crazy confusion there. That's a topic for a later video. But essentially what the gist of it is, is we're going to do our tests at two different set points for base load. We're going to put 4 kilowatts of base load on it, add the inductive load of the blower that represents something like a well pump, and then we're going to do the test again with 5 kilowatts of base load to kind of cover both of those specs and what this inverter is capable of. That way we're giving it the best chance possible to outperform the little Rosie. I'm excited. Let's jump in. So we'll be at 4,000 watts for the first test. At 120 volts, that's 33.3 amps. And for our second test, we're going to be at 41.6 amps, which is pretty much the limit of what my Variac is capable of. So that'll be perfect. Time to test it. We're at 33.3 amps. We're adding one bounce house blower like our first test in three, two, one. <laughs> so we got about 71 amps in that test, but man, I was getting some crazy high frequency screaming from the inverter, which is actually really surprising because this should be a low frequency inverter. I didn't have that kind of screaming from the midnight. So that, that was really interesting. The overload light on the inverter is turning on and we can tell it's clearly complaining, but I feel pretty good that this inverter can consistently start this blower here with the heat running. So I would feel good if you had something like a well pump, even if you're running full load. We do have the surge capacity to start it and I was consistently seeing 71 and a half amps. At this point, I'm going to turn up to the 41.6 amps. That is the 5 kVA spec. So that we're kind of testing both of them. And uh, you can kind of draw your conclusion of which test uh, you think is fair for this inverter. So we're up to 41.6 amps. The overload light on the inverter is turned on. Now, these inverters do have a spec for a slight amount of overload capability. However, it's only for a certain period of time, I presume, until it warms up. So I'm working quick here. We're going to add the blower in three, two, one. So on that test, we got a little bit more. We got about 72 amps, and the inverter did shut down on its own on an overload. But what was really interesting about that test is not only did I hear a lot of noise coming out of the inverter, the fan took a really long time to start up compared to the first test. So it'll be really, oh, it just turned back on. So the inverter does auto reset. What I was saying, though, was it'll be really interesting to see on some of these uh, further tests how long it takes the fans to start up. Because from the test with the midnight inverter, it started consistently quick every single time. So that'll be interesting to uh, test and take note of. So out of curiosity, I threw a voltmeter on here so that I can keep an eye on the voltage. We didn't do this on the test with the midnight inverter, but the slower startup really has me concerned on this one what the voltage is dropping to. So let's take a look in three, two, one. 
We dropped to 105 volts, then I saw a spike to 140. That was crazy. Let's do that one more time. And that inverter shut down as soon as the motor got up to speed. That's definitely something we're going to want to go back and check on the midnight because uh, that's a big voltage surge. Just like before, I added a second blower, and this again represents a larger inductive load. Maybe your well is deeper or something like that, or you've got a really large air compressor. I have the heat off for this. I just want to see if the inverter can start the two blowers, which is something that the midnight inverter was definitely capable of in three, two, one. So 76 amps, I know we're getting really close to before where we got about 80 amps coming out of the, uh, the little rosy. So uh, let's add 10 amps of load now and kind of replicate exactly what we did last time. So that time we were able to start it up, but that inverter was coming out of a low power shutdown. We still didn't see 90 plus amps coming out, but it was able to start it. So I really do think these inverters are quite close, but I am a little bit concerned with the uh, voltage droop on this inverter when it's hit with a heavy load. I don't know that I want to consider that quite equal to the midnight that was really able to keep that voltage high, but we probably should put our money where our mouth is and test that. So we're going to get switched around here and test it. So no load right now. We have 120 volts out. I'm going to start with just the blower. So on that first one, we dropped to about 118 uh, volts. I'm going to do one more test here, full load. So the voltage is down to 118 volts, kind of that threshold we were at on that first startup. Now let's add the blower and see where we start and what we go up to. We stayed very consistent on the voltage on that one. We dropped to about 116, and I don't think I saw a spike much above 118, 119, somewhere in there. You guys were watching on camera, so you guys got better eyes than me. We'll do the test one more time. We dropped to 116. I think we evened out at about 117. Overall, it was very consistent. So now we're going to try the second blower here. We're at 120 to start out with in three, two, one. That dropped to about 116 volts again. We're going to add that 10 amps of current just like we did on the uh, Victron. That voltage does say really consistent uh, when we apply all this load. We're definitely not overshooting like we were on the uh, Victron, which is really quite surprising. I would have thought the transformer would have helped buffer some of that uh, noise coming through or some of the spikes and that kind of thing. And then finally, with uh, 20 amps base load, two of the blowers, I'm going to keep an eye on the current again on this to uh, see what it can do as well as the voltage. So we had 116 volts. I saw about 85 amps AC, 84, 85, somewhere in there. I was trying to keep an eye on the both of them. I think overall we were holding a lot steadier. Now the uh, midnight did just shut down on that one, but uh, just by pushing the power button twice, I was able to get it to reset and we're outputting power again. So I'm gonna try and turn this down to about 15 amps actually, kind of getting that middle ground, worst scenario that the inverter can actually handle the startup on. And we'll watch that voltage uh, one more time here. The lowest I saw was 115 volts, and uh, I kind of want to do a side-by-side -side comparison to see how much faster these started up, because that voltage holding strong really did help get these inductive loads going. I might be getting into this a little too deep. It has taken me on the bench so that I can properly control everything. Here's what we have. I have my scope probes measuring voltage right here on these silver contacts. That is getting sent into the oscilloscope and the current is going through the big guns we've got out here so that we can see the AC waveform going to the blowers. 
I'm still running through my shunt just because I didn't feel like disconnecting it. I've got the power cords for the blowers. We're gonna still have the same 15 amps base load. And first we're gonna check out the waveforms of the midnight inverter, and then we'll switch our wires over to the Victron and see the difference between the two. Okay, you can see the yellow sine wave. That is our 120 volts AC. We have about 15 amps flowing right now, so the blue represents our current flowing. So if you multiply the two together, that would be your wattage. Now at this point, I'm gonna plug the two blowers in. So this was the absolute maximum load we could get out of this inverter. In three, two, one. So that was uh, the test. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dial the scope back. We're at five seconds per division now. So I'm gonna run the test again, and what this is gonna do is give us kind of the historic view over time. So with this zoomed way out, it will allow us to kind of pause the trace, and we can rewind back through to see what it looked like through various parts of the startup. Okay, we can go ahead and stop this. And now if I uh, zoom in on that, you can see this big blue area. This is where the startup took place. So if we zoom in even more on that, you can see the current was uh, more or less maxing out. Now we can see what the waveforms look like. So this is the very beginning right here where the blue waveform gets bigger. We're very small right here at our uh, 15 amps. And then right here you can see in the blue the uh, current really spikes up. And you can see the current waveform does get a little bit of distortion. And this fuzz right here, this kind of uh, squiggly lines up and down, that is distortion of the voltage. So you can see that the startup on here was from here to here. Let me get some cursors put on here so we can measure exactly how long that is. With my cursors placed at the start of where the current went up to the essentially the bottom of where the current leveled out, essentially when the motor was done starting, I have on here uh, 2.9 seconds for that startup. And uh, you guys already saw what the waveform looks like. Now we're going to uh, take a picture of this actually and then do the similar test for the uh, Victron inverter. Now it's time for the same test on the Victron. So here, first thing I noticed, by the way, is the voltage sine wave is a little bit fuzzier compared to the midnight. That means we have a slight amount of distortion. It's not all that incredibly different, but uh, now it's time to put it under some load and see what the difference is uh, for full load in three, two, one. Ooh! Oh! We had like every different sine wave I've ever seen. All right, we got to get that uh, recorded and see what that looks like. So that sine wave was all over the place. Look at that. That is crazy. We've got all sorts of little bits of uh, noise in there. Sine waves in every which shape I've ever seen. You can see right here, this is where the load first turned on and you can see it quickly got really messy and nasty on our sine wave. What I'm really interested in is if that cleaned up as the load got up to speed, because I did notice that there was some changes in the sine wave. So you can see like, that that's wild right there. Let's, uh, let's take a look here in the middle. So as the fans started coming up, we got these other different uh, voltage spikes and whatnot that affected the current. So the, the, the problem I'm really seeing here is the current is not consistent. The current is a product of the voltage here, and uh, as the waveform gets better, the, uh, the current waveform gets better. This is really interesting, and then something happens right about here. I think we hit uh, kind of the threshold. We do switch back to, we're, we're a little bit of a square wave here, and then we do finally start getting back to a sine wave. So this inverter was definitely throwing everything it possibly could at it. That's really wild how that sine wave evolved as that motor started getting up to speed there. So I'm gonna call where that sine wave cleaned up, essentially our stopping point. And we can see on the Victron, we took 3.3 seconds this time to start up. So there was definitely a longer start time with the Victron versus the, uh, the midnight inverter. And that's what I was hearing. I could tell just by kind of sitting there listening to things 
that the, the loads had a harder time starting in the second test versus the first one, uh, the first one being on the midnight, the second one being on the, the Victron. So I think this is pretty conclusive to say that just because an inverter is a low frequency inverter or high frequency inverter doesn't mean that it's any worse or better. I think it's truly how the inverter is built, the quality and attention to detail the engineers take. And I think conclusively for this test, the midnight wins on the higher power quality in this severe overload condition. Overall, I am pretty impressed and didn't expect this result considering this inverter only weighs 15 pounds. I almost thought I could get away, but I realized I need a control test. So on this big fat cord down here, I have 30 amps coming from my outlet because I already tested on a 20 amp circuit, I kept tripping it. So 30 amps are coming in, hopefully we don't trip that breaker. We have the oscilloscope set up in the same way where yellow is our voltage and blue is our current. We're still running 15 amps of base load through this. And now I'm gonna plug the fans in in three, two, one. So a couple things to note, the uh, grid sine wave hardly changed. We're going to do a capture again to look at the uh, fan sine wave, but it is important to note that the sine wave coming from the grid is not very fuzzy compared to some of the inverters, although overall the shape of it is not very true of a sine wave, which is not the end of the world. This is actually very typical for grid power, but uh, yeah, without further ado, we're going to get a farther out capture and uh, see the whole startup so you can see what the current going into the fans looks like a little bit more uh, consistently so we know what we actually were looking at when we look at the current going into the inverters. And here we go in three, two, one. So there is our current waveform on the grid and the blue current waveform, I'm guessing the reason it's not very perfect is because the motors do have capacitors in them to help with startup. So I suspect that's kind of what is causing that little bit of distortion on the current. If we look towards the end where the uh, it blower was actually started up, you can see that current waveform does clean up a little bit and it's actually pretty close to a power factor of one. So the power factor is essentially how far offset left or right the blue wave is from the yellow wave. So essentially if the voltage leads or lags behind the current, um, we're, we're pretty okay on here. So that's what it looks like coming from uh, grid power. I'm also gonna do the uh, measurement real quick of what that uh, startup time is. So there we go. We're about 3.3 seconds again from grid power. So it's actually really surprising the midnight inverter was actually able to start this fan up faster than grid power. That's pretty impressive. Other than that, we really hope you guys enjoyed this video. We enjoy making these tests. Leave a comment with any questions you may have or something you found interesting. This has been Current Connected. Check the description for links to all the products covered in this video, and we'll see you soon.